My name is Franny, and my mom and I co-wrote a manual for mothers with acquired disabilities. The manual is designed specifically for the folder that patients receive upon discharge from a rehabilitation center, offering first-person, home-based tactical design strategies for hemiplegics like my mom, who might receive training on independent living, but who actually find themselves responsible for many types of care. The manual is divided into four parts, the floor, the drawers, what we're calling the background, and the street. The following video starts with the floor, providing diagrams and a glimpse at how we narrate the manual, hyphening the perspective of a mother and her daughter. One, the floor. The floor has two states, active and neutral. Mom might not be able to hold a baby, but the floor is a level we can meet on. Mom uses the sofa and pillows to lower herself onto the floor and a few hours later to hoist herself up. When active, the floor is a table as well as a seat. Toys are toys in play, but trip hazards in rest, so active time must be bracketed. At the end, we use a basket to collect toys from their corners, neutralizing the ground. The floor as it is used by mom holds space, but also time. Patient, cyclical time. It holds our afternoons. 1A. Baskets. Mom makes cleaning up a game. Helpfulness is a natural extension of a child's increasing range of motion. There is the wicker basket for toys in the living room, but also the laundry basket upstairs, under which mom's taped felt pads help make it glide. Tip. Felt pads make the laundry basket easier to push across smooth surfaces like wood. Carpet needs no pads. A house built for disability and maternity considers the friction between surfaces, what keeps things standing, and what makes them easier to move. 1B. Sofa. The floor is an axis. The lower the furniture, the easier it is to get down to and up from. Pillows on the sofa are good for the knees when pushing up. Mom finds it harder to push up now that she's older. Mom says she falls about twice a year. When she does, she calculates what furniture is lowest. At both levels of the house, she has a map of how and where she would crawl if she fell. This is a floor plan, a way of thinking about space and architecture. Carpet affords better traction. I've never seen mom fall. 1C, carpet. A short, tightly woven carpet is easiest for mom to walk on. The thinner the carpet, the better. A liner can replace a traditional carpet pad. The catch is that mom can't take her gym shoes off to walk, so carpet can be challenging to maintain. Wood is easier to clean and better for wheelchair use. In bathrooms, mom prefers a textured tile. Mom installed cement pavers on the deck because we'll get slippery after rain and can otherwise be hard to walk on. No one is messier than a child. In mom's case, disorder is a dangerous state where with no peripheral vision due to her stroke, she is more likely to trip on something and a fall could be life-threatening. To care give, mom made a house that helped her. This manual asks architects, what would it be like to design for help? Not with a medical model, but a social one. Help, teamwork, love. In addition to care, what do these look like in a design vernacular? How do these designs make for double-sided stories, told from a mother-daughter perspective, where, when it comes to home, they want the same thing?